Ahead on local aid news at four o'clock, the all-out assault on Arnold for sex claims today. It's comments about Adolf Hitler. Another Arnold Schwarzenegger response is next. And wait until you see the new television commercial slamming Schwarzenegger. But are women voters buying it? I'm Jeff Zevely. That story coming up live. Also, trial begins for one of the men accused of killing a student from San Diego State University who was simply trying to get his bicycle. Local aid news starts in seconds. You're watching San Diego's number one source for news. This is Local 8 News at 4. They try to tear your character down and everything you stand for. And let me tell you something, they already have begun. But I, I will stay focused. Today, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character is coming under attack again. Yesterday, it was claims of sexual harassment. Now he's defending himself in a new controversy that years ago, he said he admired Adolf Hitler. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Kathleen Bade. Good afternoon, I'm Graham Ledger. Topping in our news, the latest blitz on Arnold. This one comes from the New York Times. Yesterday, it was unwanted advances, compliments of the Los Angeles Times. Despite that, the Schwarzenegger bus tour, the California Comeback Express, continues to roll on, and local aides Phil Blauer is here now with Arnold's response. Phil. Graham and Kathleen, Arnold Schwarzenegger did not say anything to supporters about the allegations as he crisscrossed the Golden State today, going from Arcadia to Santa Clarita to Bakersfield. However, he did speak about the controversy during a short media private interview on the bus. Arnold Schwarzenegger supporters are unwavered by charges that he once said he admired Adolf Hitler. Thousands attended a campaign rally in Arcadia where Schwarzenegger failed to publicly acknowledge the alleged comments. The New York Times reports that the actor turned politician says he admired the Nazi Germany leader because he rose to a position of great power from humble beginnings. Those comments were allegedly made in 1975 during the filming of the bodybuilding movie Pumping Iron. During a break from his statewide bus tour, Schwarzenegger offered this response. I don't remember ever a time where I was infatuated with Hitler. I always despised everything that Hitler stood for. He was a criminal of the highest level. He was a killer. He was evil. He has uh, used everything that he had in, in, in a negative way and against people. I despise anything that went on during that period. At a campaign rally in Long Beach with Democratic presidential candidate Richard Gephardt, Governor Gray Davis says the allegations against Arnold Schwarzenegger raise serious questions about his ability to govern. If true, his personal behavior was disturbing and unacceptable, and his professed admiration for Adolf Hitler unconscionable. Republican State Senator Tom McClintock, still in the recall race, reacted this way to the controversy. Obviously, if true, those are very, very serious charges that cut right to the core of a man's reputation. And that's why I think that everybody needs to treat those with a high degree of skepticism. Meantime, a new field poll shows Arnold Schwarzenegger with a 10 percentage point lead over Democratic Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante. McClintock is at 19 percent and Green Party candidate Peter Camejo is at 6 percent. Arnold Schwarzenegger also says he never had any tapes on Nazi Germany or marched to them as the source of the allegation claims. Now coming up new at 5, We'll have more reaction, including uh, some thoughts today from his wife, Maria Shriver, who is standing by her man. And it should be noted that, uh, you know, according to the article, the, the guy who uh, was uh, getting the stuff out there, George Butler, says that it needs to be taken in context, even if it is true, it needs to be taken in context. What Arnold was talking about was admiring strong men. And historically speaking, uh, you know, Adolf Hitler obviously was a strong man. He was a horrible man, but a strong man. Yeah, and that could be the case. And we were also talking before we went on there about another poll that's come out subsequent to the field poll, that field poll coming out days before. Uh, and, and Graham, you were saying, and rightly so, that it looks like at this point it's had very little effect on the Schwarzenegger uh, campaign and his appeal to the voters. Well, in the wake of an American politics where the Clinton administration, the Monica Lewinsky scandal yep, took place, yep. people may be sick of this sort of thing. Well, you never know. And we'll know on Tuesday how they feel. All right. Thanks, Bill. Yep. And this afternoon, the allegations of sexual misconduct against Arnold Schwarzenegger, which appeared in the L.A. Times, are not disappearing. Arnold's apology has not stopped the criticism in news reports. Some of his questionable behavior has even been shown on video in this story from Jerry Bowen. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger doing damage control, the Teflon Terminator trying to get rid of a sticky issue headlined in the Los Angeles Times. Charges he groped and fondled a half dozen women over the past three decades against their will. What I want to say to you is, is that yes, 
that I have behaved badly sometimes. The Times story mirrored allegations in old articles Schwarzenegger has previously denied. We're rolling. Oh, okay. Look at this. Now Look Arnold. At, yeah. British TV hostess Anna Richardson says the actor touched her breast after this 2000 interview when Schwarzenegger was in London promoting a film. Look at the shoulders she has. You're working out, right? He's denied that before and said today, quote, a lot of what you see in the stories is not true. But then came the extraordinary apology aimed at putting the womanizing issue to rest. I was on rowdy movie sets and I have done things that were not right which I thought then was playful but now I recognize that I have offended people and that those people that I have offended I want to say to them I'm deeply sorry about that not enough said feminist leaders Arnold's woman prop just got a lot bigger not touching it said California's embattled governor I would just rather leave this matter to the voters of this state the old stories and old videos like this 1983 trip to Brazil for Playboy haven't hurt before. Well, it's possible that the bar has been raised for scandal. We don't now require a person to be anything better than not an axe murderer. Schwarzenegger's surprise mea culpa came as the candidate launched a four-day campaign caravan that ends at the state capitol this weekend. If the womanizing issue is still there to greet him, he could be in for a very rough ride. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Los Angeles. And in San Bernardino yesterday, Arnold told reporters most of the allegations in the L.A. Times article are not true. The attacks against Arnold Schwarzenegger are not just in news reports. A new commercial has been launched by recall opponents to try at the last minute to weaken Arnold's campaign. It has been released just four days from the election. Local A's Jeff Zavley is live at the Registrar of Voters in Kearney Mesa with reaction. Jeff? Graham Arnold Schwarzenegger is adamant. He apologizes for his past and he says he supports women's rights, but it doesn't seem no matter what he says, he is still getting hammered for these allegations of sexual misconduct. And as you said, take a look at this. This is a new commercial that starts airing on Sunday. You're a woman, or your mother is a woman, or your wife, or your daughter, or your sister or there's a woman at work. You cannot vote for this man because Arnold Schwarzenegger has a serious problem with women. Commercial, that commercial is sponsored by MoveOn.org, an anti-recall activist group. In a local eight web poll, we asked our viewers, will you change your vote because of the sexual harassment allegations against Schwarzenegger? Although this poll is not scientific in any way, it's interesting. 5% of you replied, yes, I will no longer vote for Arnold, but 73% said, no, I'm still voting for Arnold. 22% of you replied, I was never going to vote for him in the first place. So opinions on the campaign trail are split as well. So I want to give Arnold a chance. Uh, his personal life, I have a personal life. Everybody has a personal life. Why not vote for Arnold? Because Arnold is a sexual harasser. We don't want a sexual harasser in the office. So here at the Register of Voters, San Diego residents who are voting early have a lot on their minds. New at 6, we'll take a look at damage control and what some people say Schwarzenegger is doing right to fend off these last-minute attacks. And it's interesting, Jeff, the, the latest Spiel poll uh, has Schwarzenegger ahead, I think, 36 to 26 percent over uh, Bustamante. That poll was taken before, as we noted, before these allegations. But there's been some overnight polling I've heard about that uh, shows that maybe this hasn't really resonated with voters all that much. Yeah, some people are calling him the Teflon Terminator. People are making accusations, but right now they don't seem to be sticking, at least not in the polls. All right, thanks, Jeff. And Local 8 News will continue to follow the latest developments in the recall race for you. Our next report is coming up today at 4.30. But first, we do have a breaking news alert from Chopper 8. Deb Henke is in uh, Chopper 8 as we speak, flying over a situation in Choice View. Deb? Yeah, uh, Graham, what we've got here, northbound side of the 805, this is just before the 94, and what we believe happened is this minivan came off Market Street and somehow or another managed to careen down the embankment. Fortunately, the person or persons, we're not sure how many people were inside the car, they have managed to get them out of this van, and now medics are working with 
the person or persons, like I said, that were inside the van. And now it's just a matter of stabilizing the vehicle. You can see that they're uh, tying it up here and uh, hopefully be able to tow this away. They're really concerned at first that because of the precarious position that it was in, that it might come sliding down the embankment. There is uh, the market off-ramp there, I do believe, and uh, the 94 just up ahead, and that's the northbound 805. So a lot of traffic backing up for no other reason, really, than to just take a look at what's going on, because it is quite a spectacle. But again, an accident northbound 805 just before the 94 car careened off the freeway, now in a very precarious situation, and now they're working just to stabilize this vehicle so it doesn't come sliding down the embankment. All right, Deb, thank you for that. She'll have more traffic for us and an update on that in a few minutes from now. Meantime, today, San Diego police are looking for witnesses who may have seen a hit-and-run crash that killed a woman in Mira Mesa. It happened about 7 o'clock last night at Mira Mesa Boulevard and Camino Ruiz. Police believe the woman was trying to cross the street when she was struck by a vehicle which fled the scene. She was then hit by other drivers who apparently didn't see her. The woman's name has not been released. Other news on this Friday, trial began today in the murder of a student from San Diego State University. Paul Mefford was gunned down in Mission Beach last year after trying to get back a stolen bicycle. Four teenagers are charged in this crime. Darius Day is the first suspect to go on trial, and local late's Jeff Goldberg is live downtown with this Crime Fighters report. Well, Kathleen, the trial is still going on this afternoon. The prosecution spent the afternoon interviewing witnesses. One witness who spoke said she saw a fight break out after the bonfire, then heard a shot fired, then saw Paul Mefford holding his chest. He was holding his chest, and he was just kind of stumbling forward. He said that he needed help. Uh, he had blood that was soaking into his jeans. Both the prosecution and the defense read their opening statements today. The prosecution says Darius Days is a member of a black gang who helped aid the gunman in the shooting of Paul Mefford. The defense also says Days and other gang members stole the bikes of Mefford and his friends and are responsible for Mefford's death. The prosecution says Days and the others celebrated the shooting. It happened July 14, 2002 at a bonfire at Mission Bay. Medford and his friends were partying that night. The friends say their bikes were stolen by suspected gang members. The friends also say they tried to retrieve the bikes from a pickup truck. Then a fight and the shooting followed. The defense says Darius Days is not a gang member, not the shooter, and did not help the shooter, and that this was a case of a group of white people confronting and using racial slurs toward a group of black men. This is about one group talking trash, one drunken group talking trash and pushing and cursing at another group who had no intention of stealing no bikes. Three other men are charged in the murder of Paul Mefford. One man, 19-year-old Calvin Pierce, pled guilty last spring to assault and agreed to testify against Darius Days. We have not yet heard from Pierce. The trial of Days continues, and the trial of the other men suspected in the murder of Paul Mefford will take place later this year. Kathleen and Graham. Jeff Goldberg this afternoon. Thank you. In the East County, investigators are looking into the cause of a fire that damaged the storage shed. It happened near the 1300 block of Old Barona Road in Lakeside. Firefighters say the fire also burned a vehicle and a trailer that were being stored in that shed. One person suffered minor injuries while trying to put out the flames before the fire crews arrived. Damage is estimated at about $3,000. Coming up next on Local 8 News at 4, the latest on the investigation into the blown cover of a CIA agent. White House employees are now given a deadline to turn over documents. One report, but two very different views on the findings of Iraq's weapons program. I'm Terry Okita. The details just ahead. We'll have that, but first, a wild chase in New Jersey when the suspect heads off-road. Have questions about Arnold Schwarzenegger? So do a lot of people. He ducks tough questions, didn't vote in 13 of the last 21 elections, and now he refuses to debate the governor he's trying to replace. Vote no on the recall. Secondhand smoke enters the throat, and it doesn't just damage the lungs. Within minutes, the smoke activates platelets, which thickens the blood and damages arteries. In time, plaque accumulates in the damaged blood vessels, obstructing blood flow to the heart. This can result in stroke or heart attack.
Arnold Schwarzenegger comes under attack again. I'm Phil Blauer. How the candidate reacts to accusations that he once admired Adolf Hitler. Plus, San Diego women respond to Arnold's sexual harassment allegations. I'm Jeff Zevely with what women have to say about yesterday's accusations starting tonight on Local 8 News at 5. I just finished my chemotherapy and I'm ready to go. I'm fighting it and I'm doing it for my daughters. March 23rd is my last treatment. Yay! Well, I want to inspire other young women that if they're diagnosed with breast cancer, their life is not over. Since I'm going through it right now to see all these women, <laughs> God, I hope I'm here in 10 years. California's wearing out. Crowded roads, old water systems, sewage plants that can't keep up. We can rebuild California with Proposition 53. Prop 53 sets aside funding for road repair, clean water, and other public projects without raising taxes or taking from schools. Endorsed by business, labor, and the leader of California's Infrastructure Commission, Cruz Bustamante. Rebuild California. Yes on 53. From the ocean to the desert, from North County to the South Bay, and everywhere in San Diego County. Clear, balanced local news that keeps you connected to where you live. This is Local 8 News at 4. President Bush is now facing increasing pressure after getting word that no weapons of mass destruction have been found so far in Iraq. But the White House says even though inspections have come up empty, there's clearly evidence showing Saddam Hussein violated U.N. resolutions. Terry Okita brings us the president's insistence that Saddam was a threat to the entire world. At four appearances before lawmakers this week, the head of the U.S. team searching for illegal weapons Thank in Iraq much, said yeah. there's plenty of evidence that Saddam Hussein was hiding something. We've shared in the classified report about two dozen major cases of where Iraq hit equipment or engaged in prohibited activities uh, that were not permitted under the U.N. resolution. But Kay there admitted his teams have failed to find actual weapons of mass destruction. Even so, their findings are good enough for the White House. These findings already make clear that Saddam Hussein actively deceived the international community. Some Democrats aren't as convinced. They say the report shows no evidence that a nuclear or biological weapons program was ever restarted or that Iraq was preparing for chemical warfare and criticized the Bush administration for rushing to war. And I would hope that at a minimum that the administration would hold off making, continuing to make the kind of statements that it is making even recently uh, about Saddam Hussein's capabilities in this area. Even the public is beginning to have its doubts. A CBS News New York Times poll finds Americans are losing confidence in President Bush's handling of foreign affairs. Lawmakers say they'll use the findings from this report to improve intelligence collection. It could take another six to nine months and millions of dollars more for weapons teams to make their final conclusions. Terry Okita, CBS News, Washington. President Bush brushed aside reports of polls showing a drop in support for his Iraq policies. He says he doesn't make decisions based upon polls. He makes them based upon the security of the American people. Now the latest on the leak of a CIA agent's identity. The White House workers are now under a deadline to turn over documents in that investigation. Staffers have until next Tuesday to turn over any information. Investigators are trying to find out who leaked Valerie Plame's identity. She is married to former Ambassador Joseph Wilson. He accused the Bush administration of exaggerating the claim of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. The federal government is looking at putting video cameras aboard commercial flights, including in the cockpit, but pilots say they don't like the idea because it's an infringement on their authority. They also say video cameras can easily be misinterpreted. People in favor of video systems say it would make air travel safer by preventing terrorism and hijackings. The technology is now being tested. A man is behind bars after leading police on a wild chase across two states. The chase began early this morning in New Jersey after police received a report of a stolen vehicle. The suspect led police along a highway and then, as you can see, through a grassy field. At one point, police attempted to pin down the car, but the car ended up pushing the cruiser right out of the way. Eventually, 
They were able to corner that suspect, and he was taken into custody in Pennsylvania. What a wild scene. Mm -hmm. Just ahead, Sean, in for Matt with the official microclimate weather forecast for the weekend. Plus, Dr. Phil has your tip of the day. Today, he talks about knowing your own personality. And later, the new catsup made for people on the Atkins diet. Well, if we got to change California, we have to change our governor. Ray Davis's fiscal mismanagement alone is a reason to recall him. 300% is ridiculous. Nobody can afford to pay that. Davis hasn't done anything to help jobs in California. We're losing jobs. It makes no sense at all. If they're here illegally, why should they be able to drive legally? We've had the higher energy prices. He is not competent to do the job. People are sick and tired of the way Ray Davis has mismanaged this great state of ours. It's California history in the making, and Local 8 News is there. Live team election coverage with the candidates in Los Angeles and Sacramento. Plus, at 10 p.m., live, a Local 8 election special, the California Recall, Tuesday at 10. Complete coverage all day, election day, on Local 8 News. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, mm. Honey, what is it? Stuffed crepes at IHOP. Right now at IHOP, it's new stuffed crepes. Tender crepes filled three delicious ways. Grilled ham and Swiss, bacon and cheddar, and supreme. Served with your choice of our famous pancakes or crispy hash browns. Stuffed crepes at IHOP. It's the stuff dreams are made of. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Come to IHOP for gift certificates so everyone can enjoy a delicious meal. It's Jerome's 49th anniversary, and we're celebrating with your choice of no sales tax or no interest till 2006, and special values at all five stores. Like Chase sectionals, only $11.98. Leather seating queen sleepers, $7.98. Six-piece pine bedrooms, $14.98. Heirloom dining room sets, only $26.98 and more. So come in and save during Jerome's 49th anniversary and pay no sales tax or no interest till 2006. Ugly, flabby, grotesque. Dr. Phil's weight loss challenge continues. To change your weight, you have to change your thinking. Monday at 3 on Local 8. Local 8 keeps you up to date today. And gives you a head start on tomorrow. Now, Local 8 microclimate weather, right where you live. is in on this Friday in Encinitas. Says anyone else here in Echo, Echo, Echo? <laughs> now batting Sean Stiles. Yeah, That's quite an introduction wars. for you. Hey, I wanted to ask you, I was at a Crystal Pier today, and I thought you would be the man to ask. I'm telling you, the waves look bigger today. Is something going on? Yeah, well, we had a lot of wind earlier in the week out in the mid-Pacific, uh, and that created a little bit of a westerly wind swell, and there is some storm activity up in the Gulf of Alaska, so things are starting to change and bubble up a little bit in the ocean. It's been flat for quite some time, and we've got the surf report coming up. But first, I want to tell you why we're up here in Encinitas. We're at the Encinitas Ranch Golf Course, and there's a big fundraiser going on here today. It's tee off for technology, and this is Thomas Normile, right? Yes. I got it right. Boy, I was really struggling with that. Tell us just briefly about the event and how it turned out so far, and we've got some things going on later. This is our, our second annual uh, fundraiser. Our first one got off uh, very well. Our second, uh, maybe even better. We got a great turnout, over uh, almost 100 golfers, and we've got a pretty hot evening planned, an auction, and we've got the, uh, the band left for dead. Uh, and now this is, this is for an elementary school. Uh, tell us why you're doing that. This is specifically to raise money for information technology, uh, computers, hardware, software, and the maintenance uh, of that at uh, the El Camino Creek Elementary School here in uh, Carlsbad. Well, thanks. I'll let you get back to the 19th hole as you go. Golfers like to uh, uh, talk you. about it. and we'll tell you about the weather. It's a nice day here in San Diego. Finally, some sunshine, and I'll tell you, we'll give you a view of the beautiful blue Pacific here in just a bit. Let's jump into the weather. We've got to wrap this up quickly and get you back into the news broadcast. A nice day in San Diego, 67 degrees. Your winds are out of the southwest. The humidity, 70 percent. Turning the page and looking at across the county here, you know, we finally had some beautiful weather here and it started in the inland areas worked out into Kearney Mason down to the coastline variable are your winds the humidity at 63 percent all right let's you know what look at this little eddy how it spun up that you really notice this coastal eddy that counterlies clock counterclockwise rotation around that and that is why we've been so cloudy it looks like it's going to clear out a little bit and maybe even some warmer temperatures 
by Sunday. 88 in Palm Springs, 67 along the coastline, 60 in San Francisco, 72 in the Tahoe area, Truckee at 72. A little bit of uh, activity moving through parts of the desert southwest and into the Four Corners region. We do have uh, area of low pressure starting to develop and move into central and northern California, but we should dodge that bullet and it looks pretty good. Surf definitely picked up two to four feet with some five foot sets. Water temperature 65 and as you can see the tide high at 604. So a good push for this afternoon evening session. There's a look at your forecast for the deserts warming up nicely into the upper 90s. And as you make your way into the mountains, 47 at Palomar, it's getting chilly, 71 for your daytime high. Folks in the inland valleys, you'll cool off a little bit overnight. 57 in Santee, El Cajon, Ramona. Poway warming to 71, 74 in Santee and El Cajon. And as we take you to the coastal strip, your daytime highs back into the low 70s. You know, from where I'm standing here, we're kind of on the ridge before you drop back down into mm -hmm. El Camino Real. I can see the Pacific out here. Give you mm -hmm. guys a view of that. Yeah, Lucadia that nice? Boulevard. That's isn't right it? down Lucadia Boulevard, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's nice. I know the producer and directors are wrapping me up here, so we'll send it back to you in the studio. We'll have your five-day forecast coming up. They're only wrapping you because they're jealous because you're <laughs> out there by the beach. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. You bet. Checking all the boulevards, the streets, the roads, the highways, the byways. Deb Hankey, ladies and gentlemen. Da -da -da. Any dirt trail, we'll go check it out for you. Hey, we're over a pretty big freeway right now, and uh, we got a big problem. It's a single earth, this 805 situation, affecting both north and southbound 805. Right here, the market ramp, uh, the market on ramp to the northbound 805. We had a car that came off the ramp and slid down the embankment. There's that van. A tree looks like might have helped stop it. It was leaning against this tree. They've shut down North 805, the market transition to the 94 and the market off ramp as a result. But they've got the vehicle secure and the tow trucks here, so it should be out of there shortly. But it's a SIG alert. And we're looking at a very busy Friday drive just about everywhere. We'll give you the details on the rest of the freeways coming up in our next report. Kathleen and Graham, back to you. All right, Deb, thank you for that. A chicken little, a porcupine, and a poser. Those are just some of the personality types that Dr. Phil identified on his show today. So what does your personality say about you? Here's Dr. Phil's tip of the day. The tip of the day has to do with how you get to be who you are. Have you ever wondered how that particular personality became yours? One of the first things you need to do is take a look in the mirror and ask yourself what kind of statement you're making to the world physically because I can promise you, you are making a statement and a powerful one that elicits different reactions from people as you go through the world. Next, you need to observe yourself as though you are watching another person when you go to work, when you walk into a party, when you're around other people. Notice how you behave and what you're saying with your behavior as well as your words. And understand that you elicit a high percentage of the responses that you get from the world. You're modeling these things for your children, so come to know your personality. On Monday, Dr.